Hello everyone, JP here from Caffeinated Warlords, bringing you the third and final battle report from the Mayhem Tournament, where I took my undead for the first time, and for the third game, I face undead. <laughs> So that's right, my undead are going against, once more, another undead list. It was Night Stalkers for game one, which I won. It was undead for game two, which I lost. And finally, I'm going against undead for game three, so somewhere in the middle. So I'm very excited because this is a pretty cool battle, and it's another different kind of undead army. He does exactly what I do, but better. What have I been taking to these games? Well, it's been three regiments of zombies, one regiment of skeleton spearmen, one troop of wraiths, two Revenant Cavalry Troops, one Horde of Whites, one Soul Reaver Cavalry Regiment with Sir Jesse's Boots of Striding just to help them do their job, a one Horde of Werewolves with the Helm of Drunken Ram, one Revenant King on Undead Horse with Surge, one Necromancer with Inspiring Talisman, Heal 3 and Bane Chant 2, one Lycanus with the Trickster's Wand which grants him Hex 2, very cool, and one Vampire on Undead Dragon with Lightning Bolt 4 and Staying Stone. So that's my army. Pretty cool, if I do say so myself. Plenty of chaff, plenty of hammers, and a dragon, because why not? So it's uh, quite fun to use, and by game three, oh, my head was starting to hurt. So what was I going to be going against in terms of undead in my opponent? So it was Dave, and Dave's undead was somewhat similar, but slightly different. So we have two regiments of revenants, one horde of revenants with a hammer of measured force. So already he's got much tougher infantry than my zombies and skeletons. We have a regiment of Soul Reaver infantry. We have a horde of werewolves, also with the helm of the drunken ram, so pretty much identical. A horde of whites, but with the brewer sharpness. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, that's... I mean, everyone's already terrified of whites anyway. And now we have them with the brewer sharpness. Continuing on, we have one revenant cavalry troop, the obligatory chaff. Um, then we get into some really nasty stuff, two balefire catapults, they always make me sweat. We have a vampire lord um, that has the blood rage and the gnome glass shield, um, which are just a, it's a good combo because the blood rage makes them a little bit more vulnerable, but the gnome glass shield helps them be tougher. Then we have the revenant king with the loot of insatiable darkness running around on foot, one necromancer also on foot with surge, weakness two, and the inspiring talisman. And finally, to really annoy me, we have the Cursed Pharaoh with the Wings of the Honey Maze, which is just a really good combo. Pretty much the only way you take a Cursed Pharaoh. So that's a pretty good list, right? It's like mine, but where everything was just tuned up a little bit more, and things were made a little bit stronger. Uh, but like mine, we both have the weakness of using werewolves, which are, uh, yeah, they're hard to use, and we will both experience that, for sure. So, there we go. Two undead lists, let's get into the battle. What are we playing? Well, it's Salt the Earth, which, you know, is a pretty, is kind of a simple scenario, but it is a hard one to end on, because there's a lot of objectives, you know. Your brain is getting pretty fried by the end, the coffee's wearing off, and sometimes I just wish it would just be, let's just do invade. Like, I just gotta get across. But unfortunately, we, we start, I think we started with invade, so uh, we have to end with something else, right? So we got Salt the Earth. So, to put it simply, we have seven tokens. You can see them all circled here, whether you can see them or not. It, it doesn't help that this is... An, it's a cool board with this kind of pattern. Oh, actually, we've been on this one before. This was where I bought, bought the Night Stalkers. But yeah, it's got this snow pattern which hides the tokens rather well. Um, but, you have seven tokens. One has to be in the center. Uh, three are played by e pay, uh, put down by each of us. Um, and then what really makes it a unique scenario is the fact that they can be destroyed um, at the end of your turn if you control it. And it could be happening at any turn of the game. It's not like raids where it has to happen like it starts at turn three. It can happen or turn two. Anyway, there's no restrictions. You can burn them. Why you would want to burn them is not because you gain a point. It's not like that. Uh, you do it to deny your opponent getting some. And so that's how it is. And now it just so happened through our placing of these tokens that we've pretty much got a mirror image. I, My strategy is because I have stupid little zombie units that I can just leave on an objective, I try to put some, because you don't get to choose your side yet, so I put them at the edges behind certain pieces of terrain if I can, so that a zombie could sit there safely and someone would really have to go out of their way to go and kill them. 
Um, so yeah, that's why I put one here, uh, one here, and our third one was over here, whereas uh, Dave was just kind of putting his in between, and it just ended up kind of a mirror image. So we've got two here on the far left, two on the far right, and then pretty much three across the center in the middle. So yeah, pretty cool. The only one you can't destroy, the middle one. The middle one has to stay. So at least there's always something to score. And the scoring is all done at the end. So yeah, it's just normal kind of objective markers. So that's the deployment. What about the battlefield? So like I said, we've uh, got the blocking train that I'm using to my advantage to put those tokens behind. And so we have this little hut here and big house here. It's it, it, we're looking at it from the other way, from the Night Stalker game. Um, we have these giant forests. I mean, look at the footprints of these forests. They are huge. So one giant forest over here in the corner and one giant forest pretty much right in front of my deployment zone. Kind of annoying, but also good to help mitigate those Balefire catapults. Then we have a big hill here. Just one big hill. That's big enough. Two obstacles, one jutting out of this hut on the left, and another jutting out of the big hill. And then in his deployment zone there is one flat terrain. And I don't believe there is another flat terrain on the battlefield. So, yeah, I, I mean, the fact is this not the same amount of, um, like an epic dwarf amount kind of, of terrain, where it's two, 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 but instead we have really massive ones, so it kind of all works out in the end. Um, and it's always good to have variations, otherwise it's all feeling quite samey. So this is the setup, let's see the armies. Boom! Armies appear. So we can see my army down here, pretty much just all <laughs> trying to hide behind this forest, because over here he has his Balefire catapult, um, and ever since they started killing Placoderms, like, the Placoderms are defense 6, but the moment they start doing damage to a Placoderms, then I'm just scared of them, so, I mean, they've already done their value because they've forced me to deploy like this, um, but, you know, what are you going to do? It's, uh, I just don't want to lose units, especially not like whites or something. But unlike placoderms, you know, the undead are actually quite durable, so they can take a couple of hits, so it won't be so bad. So let's take a look um, at my deployment first. So, as expected, zombies and zombies, either side, sitting on these tokens, and he really hasn't put anything to go hunt them down. Like, there's this unit of Revcav here, but like, it was Revcav 4 to 8 attacks? No way. 8 attacks on 4s, they're not going to get these, so that's... I think they're just there in case I was going to put units out there. Then the bulk of my forces, really like, <laughs> I'd say like 95% of my forces right here around this forest. So, Troop of Revenant Cav right there, which I've just finished multi-basing actually for my next tournament. Uh, then we have the Lycanus sitting there ready to do hexing. I always kind of like to make him able to get into a situation where he can start casting hex in turns 1 and 2. Because he really won't end up casting hex for the rest of the game. So I try and make leverage the fact that he can see by putting him kind of at the front. Behind him is the Necromancer, doing Necromancer stuff. We have the regiment, of, so we have a cavalry right there behind a chaffing zombies. Um, then I have the wraiths in front of the whites. I have my mounted Revenant King and then Revenant Cavalry in front of, well, more zombies. They're not chaffing them, it's just kind of ended up that way, but these guys I don't really care if they get shot at. Um, and then what you cannot see, and I think I'll hopefully have a picture, but on the right side next to these zombies, but still on the table obviously, is the uh, Vampire and Undead Dragon and the Werewolves. Doing something I haven't done in the games leading up to this is trying a cheeky flanking maneuver. Should I have done this? Probably not. It kind of goes against a lot of things I've been learning lately to do with these kinds of units, which is actually to put them at the power points of the game, of the board, which are, you know, at the one-third point, so here and here is where I should be putting, because then they can project threat to a lot, they can act in all kinds of directions, but the Balefire catapults were messing with my head. So I was putting them over here because this big forest and this blocking terrain were completely protecting them, I'm like, aha, and now I can you know, bring them in to, you know, flank attack everything and win. You know, it was, you know the, the things you think of at the, in the last game aren't particularly the best, but we will... I won't justify them, but I will identify them. Now his army, what do we have? We have over here the Sharpness Whites that absolutely terrify me. Then we have a true uh, the Regiment of Revenants. Then we have the Soul Reavers in between. And then another Horde of Revenants. Then we have Werewolves, and then a Regiment of Revenants, and then there's the Troop of Revenant Cav. Uh, where the characters are, I'd say that, that is the Pharaoh, there's a Pharaoh there, I think a Revenant King and a, a Necromancer are somewhere in between all those, and I think that's the Vampire. It's all pretty hard to tell, but I have better pictures, and obviously the Balefire Catapults. 
um, which uh, I've fixated on for far too much of this discussion so far. Oh yeah, look, there's the Mantic certified tape measure that I got in my crazy box. It's actually really good. It's the best tape measure I've ever used for my wargaming. But that's not hard to say because I've uh, pretty much wholly purchased ever terribly cheap ones at $2 stores. I have never even bought one at a proper hardware store, so, you know, I kind of brought it on myself. But let's just say this one is good, and it came in the crazy box, so really, it's free. It's not paid for the crazy box. Yes, here we go. Dragon and werewolves. Flanking maneuver. Probably a bad idea, but a good idea in my mind. And also, there's not that much room here behind that forest. I've already taken advantage of as much as I can. Probably what I should have done is try and put them out on the far left using that hill to take care of them. But then still he could hit my dragon, so you know, that's why I'm scared. He hit my dragon! But yeah, he could also just roll fours and miss the entire game. So nice pictures, I decided, yeah, this is the game where I'm going to take pictures. Because actually this is the first army um, in this tournament so far that I've played against that's fully painted. So I just thought it was worth taking pictures and showing it off. Yeah, here they are, his Revenant Cavalry. His werewolves, he said someone else painted them, but who cares, they look great. Mantic werewolves. He's got his revenants, which are really just the skeletons, but they're very nicely painted, so who cares. Oh, I love the, the kind of the, the teal, he uses a lot of teal. Yeah, teal and purple, it's a good look. More skeletons. These are his uh, whites, which I believe are from Warmer Hordes. A game that no longer probably makes these models anymore, because it's completely changed. Yes, it's just, it's good, it's a solid army, you know. Ah, uh, yes, here's, uh, I can't remember where you said he got this miniature from, but it's his Pharaoh. Um, and there is the Necromancer. Yeah, Pharaoh. Yeah, and there we go. And this is looking from the other side of my army. Hello, you're hiding behind, <laughs> behind a forest, you cowards. But it's turn one. Let's get into it. So, turn one, me. Um, well, actually, no. Who went first? I think he goes first, and then I go. Yeah, that's what happened. It's just, you know, the, the turn one happened, and then I took a picture right at the end of all of it. So he moved, and you can just see everything kind of moved up, apart from his pharaoh, which is nice and boldly going forwards, because nothing can really hurt him. And he knows that I don't want to send in anything that can hurt him, because it will get hurt by Sharpness Whites. He did manage to do some shooting on my troop of Revenant Cavalry there, for damage, quite respectable, you know, considering that, you know, most of the time you're just going to miss. So he did some damage there, but no, not enough to worry me, really. So then in my turn and response, I moved up everything, just kind of getting into the forest. I kind of like having my units in the forest, because these the cavalry have got the boots, so they don't care if they have to charge through it, and things that fly don't care either, because if, as long as they don't end in terrain, they're fine. They don't get hindered. So it's kind of a, a cool idea of having your flying things in the terrain and then jumping them out, you know, like, oh, surprise, kind of thing. So yeah, everything just moving up. I don't need to get into the specifics. Zombies not moving, in case you need an update. And here's my flanking attack. Ha ha! But already I was finding some troubles because this thing's so big and when you have... It, but it's also far enough away that I can't go at the double to then see in. So I have to move at the double just to get to a good position. But then the next turn will be the turn when I can see into the forest and see his units. So actually, even though they look like they could be threatening, they completely are not. My dragon is kind of threatening if anything kind of comes past here, but obviously Dave is a good player and he will check for that sort of thing. So unfortunately, it's uh, quite annoying in the fact that I thought that this was a great idea when in fact it might not be, but there you go. Wait, just think about things a bit more, but uh, yeah, I wasn't thinking very much by this point, but I was having fun. Oh, in case you need to know what the zombies were doing on the left. Nothing. Ah, but I did hex. I didn't have a hex token. I uh, really should make one, definitely for the big tournament I'm going to soon. Uh, so I managed to hex his necromancer, which is good fun. And I did manage to also heal these guys, because I got the heal spell. Heal three on the necromancer, pretty good. And so everything just looking pretty cool. Pictures, turn two. Going through it fast. Turn two, everything again on his army moves up. So what's what's really trying to threaten? Well, we have these werewolves trying to um, just get a bit closer, and he's trying to also um, get onto this objective. He doesn't. I don't think he wants to burn anything just yet. And he's keeping these revenant cav all the way back here to hold that objective because he actually doesn't have anything that he can just leave anywhere. These are the cheapest unit he has. His revenants can't be just sitting somewhere. His uh, werewolves certainly. So that's actually the one thing that can hold an objective. And it's very important that he does so. 
Over here, he's turned his whites. This is probably the most key thing of all the movements, is that the whites have turned the forest. So were I to peek in, I would have a very, very unhappy time because I would be hit by these guys. And I mean, yes, they'd be hindered, but then suddenly they're back to being normal whites. They're hitting on threes. So sharpness whites are quite terrifying. And here's my turn to... So I have jumped the gun, um, and this is exactly what I said I shouldn't be doing in the previous games, but at least this time I didn't do it with my werewolves because I physically could not. Chances are if the werewolves were able to charge, it would be them doing the charging, but instead I've sent out all the chaff that's not a zombie. So off goes... Oh, and skeletons. Off goes the uh, Revenant Cavalry into uh, either the werewolves here to kind of hold them up because they were getting they were definitely in range of all my stuff and I thought no can't have that got to go in and get the first shock but silly I don't know if that's a great idea I really should have just invited them so then I can hit them back but that's where we are so I've charged them in I've charged in here with my wraiths and the Revenant as well into this Revenant uh, wraiths and Revenant cavalry into his Revenant infantry it's all getting very confusing. Um, and I was I think somehow I was thinking the double charge might somehow do better, but you know, they're hitting on fours. There's ten attacks in the wraiths, there's eight attacks in the revenants. I mean, yeah, they're gonna punch through and do some damage, but they're not gonna break them. It'd be really cool if they did, but it's definitely not their main role, and I should stop thinking that revenant cavalry charging is a good idea. A revenant cavalry horde definitely is cool. That can charge into things and do damage, but a revenant cavalry troop should just sit in places that's inconvenient for my opponent to hit and hopefully not die. That's all I needed them to do. Silly me, but here, pictures. Pictures make it cooler. Oh, yes, there we go. Damage. Seven damage is actually pretty good, but that means I need ten twice, which is unlikely. It's not a battle plan, does that make? Three damage from a single troop into werewolves is actually very good. So I'm quite pleased with that. Um, and they laugh leashed a bit, so I guess that's good, but guess what? We're going to get flank attacks. The flank attacks could come in from all directions, and there's a vampire just to help as well. So, And the werewolves, of course, are still quite scary. So turn three. My chaff are stuck there. I did not get flanked atta flank attacked by the revenants. Perhaps they could not. Could they not see? Uh, no, they could not. There you go. I was kind of smart. But instead I get flank attacked by the blood rage vampire, who is at least hindered. But yeah, I think the werewolves could probably do the job by themselves. And then the vampire would just help chuck in a few more damage. Um, the revenant horde just kind of sitting around. It definitely didn't want to do a flank attack because that would expose its own flank. It did not want to do that. Fair enough. Um, over here we can have a view of a nice big annoying tree that I put back for some reason. But anyway, what can we see? So, um, my two chaff units are now themselves getting charged either here by the Soul Reaver infantry, which are actually the mummy units, but he's using them as Soul Reaver, which is fair enough. Mummies are meh. So in goes the Soul Reaver into the Wraiths, which definitely should kill the Wraiths, but at least Wraiths are probably my preferred chaff to go into Soul Reavers. Um, and then the Revenants are going into the Revenant Cavalry, which, you know, might, might see something, but they've only got 12 attacks, so I don't expect that to end anytime soon. The real calamity is that in the... Um, in the uh, uh, hope, I think I was, yeah, I was moving these werewolves into, let's see if we can go back. Yeah, I'd moved these werewolves here, and I didn't mention, but they'd moved there so that I could actually be in range of that token to burn it, because I had a nasty feeling that I couldn't hold that token to the end of the game. But in so doing, well, they were in sight, not only of the, of the pharaoh, who can obviously see them because you know, he's an individual, but also the whites, I didn't check. And I really, really should have, because those sharpness whites are now into my werewolves who definitely cannot take that hit. And the only thing to um, act as any kind of repercussion for such a transgression are skeletons, um, which is not exactly much of a threat, and hence he took the chance, even though he might still be stuck there. So, not great. Yeah, here's a proper picture. And there is uh, the... the... Uh, Pharaoh. I'm not sure why he's got a bit of damage. Oh, I think I did a hex on him as well. And he's like, I don't care. And charged in. So, now we're just looking at the carnage. Damage being done. Let's see. So, uh, I think we're just taking more pictures. What's going on? Huh. Well, somehow. What's going on here? I reckon I have somehow survived? No. No, there we go. Alright, so 
I just somehow did not take the right picture to show the actual resolution of all this stuff, but let's piece it together from here. So now I really am in combat, but what we can tell is that the werewolves are absolutely fine. So they did not, they, they managed to kill the, um, my chaff quite easily, and then I've sent in the Lycanus to go into those werewolves, while at the same time, because I couldn't quite fit, or I think it was slightly out of range because he moved them back, uh, I decided to go for the vampire with my Soul Reaver cavalry, in the hope that killing the vampire I might overrun, but I, it's definitely not going to happen with the way this is all set up, so it's all not going very well. Obviously I had to use the boots in so doing. Then here I have both the zombies and wraiths, well, no, whites, going into the horde of revenants. So that's all right, you know. Uh, the main reason the zombies went in at all was to actually force these guys to slide over and not go on the obstacle, because I do not want hindered whites. I want my whites to be hidden at full power, and so that's why that is the case. Um, then over here we have, well, we have survived. See, you can see that I've got six. Uh, only six wounds down on the wraiths and two wounds down on the revenants, so this battle continues. And what that did facilitate was my dragon to come into the flank of that revenant unit. So that's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. I wish you could go into the soul rivers, but they're the same size, so I couldn't get a peek at that. So that's what's happening here. Hey, a bit more zoomed out. Um, yes, and the whites are still there, so I've managed to go into them with the skeletons, which I thought would actually be okay. You know, 30 attacks thanks to being a flank attack, and my Revenant King has gone into the Pharaoh to shut him down because I'm getting really annoyed with him. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not looking good because if I don't kill certain things, I'm going to get flanked in all kinds of places, but let's hope. Yes, there they are. I think he tried to move them forward just to get away. I'm not sure why he didn't rotate them to face, but also, yeah, I'm not sure. But that's how we got here. And um, yeah, so into the... Yeah, he's turned. He's, oh, he turned? Oh, no, no, no. I think he said, oh, no, actually, I would like to turn them. So he, yeah, he turned them. I think that's what I'm showing here. I'm not entirely sure, but there's one damage there. Um, my Revenant Cavalry facing the wrong way. Oh, I had them face the other way. So, yes, they've turned around. We managed to kill here the Revenants. No problem, because obviously a flanking dragon is fantastic. It's the one way you want to have your dragon. Um, so they've turned to face the, uh, yep, the Whites. Oh no, it's in here. Yeah, now it's in his turn. That's why he's turning them. So yeah, don't worry. I didn't just let him turn them. Um, and then here we have yeah, Wraiths. Oh, it's doing nothing. They're just trying to chip away at the Soul Reavers a little bit while hopefully my Dragon can get into them. Um, here, not much has died. And the worst case is that I only did one damage to his Vampire. So my Soul Reaver absolutely tanked. And now they're going to get destroyed. Um, oh no, one damage, seven damage. It's still pretty good, but you know, the nerve of a vampire is quite high, um, and we will be stuck here. Um, so yeah, not the greatest situation. So now, there we go, turn four, getting counter-attacked, counter-charged by the whites. I've got the pharaoh just going to go back into my revenant king, so that might lead to something. Soul Reavers continue, the revenants continue, and the flanking attack of this is what it was expected and I feared because of the vampire completely holding up and not dying I had to take a flank attack from these guys off a hill so this is revenant so you know they're hitting on fours uh, with thunder one and 24 attacks uh, that's gonna hurt and it did wow that didn't take long to resolve <laughs> sorry about the suspense and lack of it um, but yeah that's just what happened and then over here well Looks like, yeah, my whites took some damage, but, you know, nine damage, they're scared, but they can still hold, so that's pretty good, and we did a bit of damage to them, I suppose. Um, four damage, that seems bad. It must have been healed. So in my turn, so we, that's, everything's now moved around, I've moved back to the zombies, the Lycanus still tanking the werewolves, which is admirable, but now he's completely surrounded by revenants, and his revenant cavalry are coming this way, because they're like, oh, there seems to be stuff going on, so he's abandoned that objective. But in my turn, I have managed to flank and front charge this revenant horde, which I think is important, because it's a big blob of unit strength, but really it doesn't matter all that much, but that's what's happening, so I've pretty much going to guarantee, hopefully, its deletion, whereas the Soul Reaver did manage to deal with the Wraiths, um, but have turned to face now nothing, because my dragon's like, I'm not going into the front of Soul Reavers. Thank you. Over here, I was, uh, I guess, happy. To, I, yeah, I don't know why I really turned these guys, the Revenant troop, to face the Wraiths, because I thought, well, maybe whites because I thought maybe the whites would take a bit longer to get through spearmen, but the, yeah, just because they're going into a phalanx doesn't really matter, because they have 
they have the, yeah, the brutal sharpness. So they went right through the skeleton spearmen and then turned to face in the front the Revenant cavalry, which yeah really was as effective as it could be in the front, which is eight attacks, which is not much, and hindered. Wonderful. So I do a little pittance worth of damage. Turn five. What will Dave do now? Well, he counter charges with the with the uh, whites because white, wouldn't you? Sorry, I won't do that again. Uh, <clears throat> and then, uh, well, yeah, I did manage to kill the Revenant horde and. With my stuff now facing his Soul Reavers, he's not quite sure what to do with the Soul Reavers, so I think he's just going to turn them. Um, over here, yeah, we're just showing. I think I've put that turn 5 a bit early. Ah, uh, but yes, he did, ma did, uh, he did manage to kill my Revenant troop. Um, he's getting some flank attacks and some various things that have just been sitting there far too long. I don't mind the zombies, but my poor Lycanus. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, he's not here to just kill werewolves, but he, he definitely didn't have the backup of the Soul Reaver cavalry that he was supposed to because they. Let him died because they hit a vampire and bounced. Um, that vampire is now going into the uh, whites, and so the whites hopefully can hold out because they are a bit damaged. And uh, yeah, you know, it's they're on seven. They're probably going to get hurt a bit more, and that just puts them closer to the danger zone. Um, over here, nice scenic shot of a battle between Revenant King and Pharaoh, who is the mightiest king of them all. Uh, the Lycanus did not survive a flank charge from the Revenant Cavalry, which is the way that they should be used in flanks. Um, and neither did the Zombies, they couldn't take Revenant Infantry in the flank. But the Whites are on 12 damage, but hold! So that's pretty cool. Um, and my uh, Dragon is facing off against the Soul Reavers, but they're not attacking each other. Not just yet. So in my turn, what will I do? Well, this is where my brain absolutely melted through my ears. So uh, it's turn 5. Uh, there's the objectives to consider, and I'm thinking about how I'm going to win this game. Because right now it's a draw. I have the two zombies, remember? Two zombies on two objectives, and then he has... Uh, he definitely going to have this objective, because uh, I've just got these here. And there's object one objective back here on the hill, so he's got two. He can no longer get back to that one he abandoned with his Revenant Cavalry. If he'd left the Revenant Cavalry there, he might have actually won. But unfortunately, he brought them in. So... With that in mind, I was then thinking, well, how can I win? You know, I'm going to be smart. Let's think of smart ways to win this game. What will I do? Um, so I was like, I can't have this one, seemingly. I thought, well, actually, there's one over here behind that forest. Why not send off my dragon to trudge after it? You know, just, let's just go. Let's go get it. Like, there's no consequences. These whites can't get me. See, look, I put this arc down. I measured it out. I'm like, see, look, it's perfect. Now Dave, poor Dave, he was watching me do this and wondering what the hell I was thinking. And, you know, obviously he's not going to say the exact thing that he really, like, I should be screaming in my own head when I did this stupid thing, which is, hang on, these Soul Reavers are facing the dragon, and that is definitely 12 inches. You're putting your bum to Soul Reaver infantry. Why? So he thought I was just a genius or something, and I'd come up with something that he couldn't even fathom. Like, I was drawing his Soul Reaver out to somehow, I don't know, orbit my dragon around the sun and fling it into victory. But no, it was, uh, it was, I was just absolutely not thinking. I kind of saw these, and I thought they were facing the other way, or, I, no, I didn't even consider them. What, let's just say the truth. I did not even consider them which way they were facing. I just somehow thought they were just nothing. And so... <laughs> Yeah, so I went off after this objective thinking, well, if I get this one, I've got the two zombies then, and if it's turn six and I get over there, then, well, I got three, he has two, I win! And that's, yeah, obviously, you know, you, the viewer, know that this is not how the game works, because I will get flanked and absolutely demolished. Not flanked, I get rear-charged 60 attacks from Soul Reavers. It doesn't matter that they got nerfed by five attacks when they're getting 60 attacks. So that's how it's going to end, isn't it? Whereas really what I should have done, so if we go back in time, um, what I should have done from here, he, he's, he has the ability to fly, he can see, what I should have done is charged these revenants. He can see the revenants, I don't think he was in a flank, but he could have gone to the front. What he could have done would have charged here, in the front, maybe killed them, probably not, doesn't matter, because these guys are facing the wrong way. He might get reared by the whites. Yeah, well, maybe, you know what, actually, there's no there's no good thing. Because before I recorded this, I thought, I was, oh, I remember thinking back to this game and thinking, oh, maybe I should have charged off somewhere else. But really, there wasn't a location he could have gone to, perhaps. But this is definitely not the location he should have gone to. So, uh, yeah, that wasn't smart. 
But turn six, let's go see how it all turns out. Hey, look, he did this, and I was just... <laughs> my jaw dropped. I'm like, ah, oh, no. Of course he can do that. Ah. Oh. And, I, yeah, we just laughed. We just laughed because it was so dumb that I did this. And I'm sure... I don't think anyone was watching at this point. Or maybe they were. Maybe my friend Matt from Goonhammer was also there. You know, it's things like this that, you know, put my, um... My ability to write about Kings of War content on the internet because people don't have to start writing about Kings of War if they're playing games like this. Um, but you know, here you go. Even even the mediocre can somehow get even medio more mediocre. Uh, but yeah, very very silly. And my poor wraiths, uh, whites are getting a front charge from werewolves, which are, you know it's not the worst thing in the world. But there we go. More shame. Um, and my Revenant King, somehow still holding out. The Pharaoh couldn't kill him, so now the Whites are coming in. Um, and we've got all kinds of attacks going into the into the Whites. Um, can they hold out? They go up to 14 damage, and I believe it was double one. Yes, so they held out. Very good of them. So I did manage to have stuff in the middle, but he had more unit strength. Um, so at least he could clinch uh, that objective there. Because I think three... Or was it a draw? It might have been a draw there. Or maybe not. In any case, I had the two objectives. He had the one on the hill because he left his Revenant Cavalry up there. Um, and it's a very good thing that I deleted that one over here, but with my werewolves. It did cost the lives of the werewolves, but it did mean that he didn't have that one because the, soul, uh, the, the sharpness whites could definitely take it out. But there we go. That's the end of the game. Um... And so it was a draw, two and two. So two and two there, and then the attrition points, well, it was very heavily skewed in his favor because I was just, it wouldn't have been this bad if I gave him the vampire dragon, but I did. So he managed to kill pretty much my whole army apart from those zombies and I think the white king, yeah, I think the whites must have died. But anyway, he got the, it managed to, you know, more like a victory, um, but it was still a draw. So, you know, one, one loss and for my first time using undead at a tournament so what do I think of my list and how will I change it I think I've already discussed it a bit but um, leading into the um, next major event on the Victorian calendar which is Convic um, you can look at my videos from last year when I took my goblins this time taking the undead because I want to be a power gamer and what I've done is I've changed things up a bit gotten rid of the werewolves gotten rid of the dragon and gonna chuck in Soul Reaver infantry um, at the wazoo so two regiments of them which I'm uh, painting right now um, and they're multi bases uh, so that's really the main difference as well as it, you know changing up the heroes a bit there's no Lycanus so I'm changing it to some more revenant kings and and the, yeah, the necromancer is mostly the same, but that... Oh, and Balefire Catapults are in, because they finally got shipped in. The whole reason they weren't in this list, mostly, is because they were still shipping from the UK. But I got them in, I'm getting them painted, and so it should all be nice and brand new for those battle reports then. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the battle report just then. Um, I, you, you're free to lambast me in the comments, but if you have any other criticism that's a bit more valid to things that can improve my gaming, um, then I'm open to that as well. So otherwise, make sure to keep caffeinated, especially in the final round, um, as I probably didn't in this game, uh, so that you don't make silly mistakes like that. And I will see you next time, um, probably for more hobby videos, leading into, eventually, a whole slew of battle reports from the Convict Tournament. So until then, goodbye. <laughs>